What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone, we got Michael of The Unity. Thank you so much for your time today. Hey, hi. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Yeah, great to meet you as well. So I was just listening to Pride. Great record to, you know, begin the weekend with. Do you just want to talk about, like, how the making of this record was in terms of, like, the songwriting, recording, mixing, all that fun stuff? Cool. Yeah. Um, should I start? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, you know, we, we have the luxury uh, of um, of being five songwriters in a six-piece band. So um, so um, we always have tons of good ideas, sometimes already finished songs. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's pretty easy to write new stuff, but I think if... Um, if you have only one or maybe two songwriters in the band, it's more difficult. Um, and so I, I, I guess you can hear it on the new record that we have a certain variety in the songs. Um, it's not that you can say it's a pure AOR production or it's a pure heavy metal stuff. It's it's um, a mixture of everything, I guess. So at least this is something that I've been told from the uh, reviews I read so far and I heard so far so um, and even our own impression is that we have on the new record on the Pride record a really yeah, big variety um, in, in terms of, of the musical style it's as I said not pure heavy metal it's not pure hard rock it's not pure AOR it's it's a mixture yeah and this is, this is cool yeah I've noticed that like from listening to the album going from like Hands of Time to Lion and Sinker right after to We Don't Need Them Here like it almost seems like every song in a way plays by its own rules do you think if maybe like a listener who knows all of you guys were to listen to this album and knows all of you guys personally they may be able to tell like who wrote which song in a way mm, I don't no I don't think so you know um, when my wife is listening to the stuff we are, we are composing She's always asking, oh, who, who was writing that song? Sometimes, I mean, sometimes <laughs> we know each other since almost 30 years, so she knows the way I'm writing songs. So um, most of the time she recognizes this, but um, we have four more songwriters, and, and there is uh, pretty hard for her to say, okay, this song is written by Henio, or that song is written by Steph, or whatever. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess the listener... Um, cannot be sure about that so yeah yeah you know as a drummer do you sometimes like and, and a songwriter do you need other elements before you lay down the rhythm and the beat or do you like lay down an entire drum section first and then the rest of the band can like write arrangements over that in a way no you know usually um, you, you you don't start with a with a rhythm section to write a song. You usually start with having a, a melody line or maybe um, uh, a cool guitar riff or something like that, or or a, a melody on a guitar, a vocal line, whatever. Um, but but usually you do, you don't start by having a cool rhythm. I mean there are exceptions to the rules, but um, um, in our case we haven't had that so far. So um, when when I'm writing songs. I do this on a re on a, on a, on a guitar, mm. and I start I, I start uh, with a with a guitar riff most of the time, and th then um, when I have the feeling that this guitar riff is worth um, working on, uh, I, I, I send uh, the stuff to to our singer and uh, try to find something like a verse or like a bridge or like a chorus or whatever, and if he if our, our singer, if Jamba has a cool idea for that, we continue working on the track. And if not, then, okay, skip it and maybe work on it later or, or just leave it on the computer or whatever. Yeah. So, I've always, yeah. I've always said that drums are like the glue of a song because, you know, if yeah. you're starting off with a vocal melody or a guitar melody or something like that, you know, it may be off rhythm and maybe off beat and the drums kind of like help piece yeah. everything together. That has to be true, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. This uh, this is uh, what I also recognized when you know when I when I start to write a song and I have something like a riff and a verse and uh, just just a general structure of a song, not 
not even uh, the whole track, but at least the, the, the little pieces you need. Um, then, then I record it on the computer, and what I do is I program uh, drums on a on a uh, yeah with something like a like a plugin for my for my recording uh, setup, and. Um, I do it really. This is really a raw, <laughs> a raw programming of of of, uh, of of drum line, so to say. Like only two back, two back, two back, whatever. And then later, when I see okay, this is worth w working on, then I start to add some more bass drums maybe um, i change uh, from hi-hat to the right cymbal or i i bring in some drum fills and then you notice exactly what you said these drums became become something like a glue because um, um uh, all of a sudden when when you start to work on the arrangement for the drums it all comes together you know Mm -hmm. And it's not like like if you have just like to chuck to chuck like for two minutes it's pretty boring. But <laughs> but if you work on it and then you work on the little details, then it starts to to become a song. Yeah, Do, I was always curious. You know, I, I I'm very interested in drums. I can't keep a beat to save my life. But I've always been interested. Like, how do you know when you're listening to the melody or the arrangements? Like, when you have to use the ride symbol, when you have to use the crash yeah. symbol, when you know you have to maybe lay down, you know, extra bass drum. Like, is there a certain art? Do you hear that in the melody? To be honest, it's something that you have to feel. And um, this is nothing that that you can. Um, yeah, how can I say it? Um, you know, I have I have a lot of years of experience, and um, it, it's the same like learning walking. You know, when you were born, you you're not able to walk. It's it's obvious. But then later, um, about after a few months, maybe after one or two years, you start to 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 walk on your own uh, uh, feet, and. Uh, uh, when you start to, to, to walk, it's pretty hard for you because you have to learn it. But nowadays that you're becoming older, it's something that's quite natural for you. You don't have to think about it. And, and this is the same for me on the drums. When, um, when I'm doing an arrangement for the drums, um, it, most of the time I don't have to think about it. Um, it's just something that happens naturally because of my, yeah, let's say about my experience, something like that. And um, um, yeah, maybe sometimes it happens that maybe one of my band members says, hey, Michael, why don't you play in that part, hired instead of the right symbol? And I say, okay, good idea. And it works. So sometimes my my <laughs> my inner feelings are not, uh, not the best ones, maybe. But um, but uh, it, it's not that I, I'm sitting here on a piece, with a piece of paper and write down what to play on each part of the song. This is something that in 99% in happens naturally. Mm -hmm. Being that you've played in so many projects, you know, aside from the Unity, such as Gamma Ray and so many other bands, is the mind frame or your approach to drumming different depending on the project you're in? Or since drumming seems to have kind of like a universal goal to just keep the rhythm and keep the beat, there's kind of like a similar method behind every project you've worked with? I mean, um, it's, it's both, I guess. You know, when when you play in a certain band that has a certain style, then you have to um, be able to keep uh, this certain style alive by your way of playing. You, you let let me give a really hard example, but um, yeah, it's 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 not a maybe not the best example, but but you will get the idea behind this. When 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 a jazz band will call me and ask me, hey, Michael will you play in our band and I start to play heavy metal drums, then it's obviously the wrong thing to do. So um, if, if you if you um, think about all the projects I've done, like Gamma Ray, like Uli John Roth, uh, like Primal Fear, uh, tons of more stuff that I did, uh, there was always, um, the main thing was always to, to, to keep the time and have a good rhythm, have a good groove. But... If you if you go into the details of that, then it's every time it's different from band to band. Uh, 
because some bands want me to play, let's say, busy drums, like having uh, monster drum fills with uh, with tons of speed and everything, and other bands want me to play exactly the opposite. Uh, they want to keep it as simple as possible, and and when I join a new project, um, I always have to have to 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 see and uh, we have to discuss what they want from me if it's not obvious like you know when when i i joined primal fear last year and they they are a band that is already uh in the business since 25 years or something and um it's obvious that they have their kind of style and their way of playing the drums so i i yeah i was sure what to do but if I'm joining something like a new project, when uh, wh where you have some 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 kind of mastermind who has all the ideas and all the songs in his in his mind, uh, and he wants me to to play the drums on it, we have to just discuss it first. What to do? Mm -hmm. Do you want busy drums? Do you want more laid back stuff? Do you want more simple stuff? Whatever. It's it's pretty different to each band. Of course. Of course. I, going back to like the songwriting process of Unity, because like um, w with the Unity, was there like a preconceived idea on how you wanted Pride to sound, being that there are so many songwriters in the band, or was there like a lot of improvising involved? Um, you know, um, Pride is our third record, and um, we know what we want, and we sure know what we don't want. Um, when we're talking about the sound and the the compositions about the songs, um, so everyone in the band was pretty pretty sure what to do and what not to do in in, in case of songwriting. So um, that was something that we didn't even have to talk about because it was obvious for everybody what to do and what to leave. And um, so yeah. It, I, I must admit that the, the songwriting process was pretty easy. It was, I mean, pretty easy um, the way it can be pretty easy, but, um, yeah. um, um, but, but, but I, I did different productions in the past where you had big discussions, why you skip this idea and why you choose that idea. So um, we didn't have that for that record. So um, maybe it's because we're working together since a few years now and everyone knows what to do. Yeah. 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 Saying a songwriting process is easy. I wouldn't tell too many bands that because, uh, you know, every, every time I ask how the songwriting was, I get like a long uh, sob story about it. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. That's that's what I always experienced in the past. Yeah. But I mean, we're a bunch of grown-up people here in the band. Like uh, most of us are, are around fifty years old, so we have we have a lot of years of experience, and we all know um, uh, that, that or, or we all know what we have with this band because we are all very good musicians not only experienced but good musicians we have a really fantastic singer we have two great guitar players our keyboard players are fantastic everybody in the band is fantastic so we all know what we have and we all know that we can rely on each other and we don't have to start any discussions so i mean this was pretty easy yeah <laughs> yeah it seems like it seems like you have a very organic songwriting process nothing seems to be forced right no, it's not. I mean, we had some kind of pressure, I have to say, because um, you, you may have noticed that this is our third record in three years, which is, yeah, which is uh, pretty unusual for, for these times nowadays. Um, and it was, yeah, it was not always easy because we had this um, time schedule that we had to keep and um, but but in the end we made it so um, yeah so there was a certain also a certain pressure because the first two albums were very good uh, or got very good comments and reviews and a lot of people liked it and and our fan base grew in these two or three years so we knew we shouldn't fuck up this now sorry you yeah. have to keep it properly <laughs> we shouldn't we shouldn't <laughs> we shouldn't uh, do something wrong and um uh we have to really make sure 
that uh, the people who like our stuff from the first two records will also like the stuff on the new record mm -hmm. without repeating ourselves you know we, we didn't want to repeat our our songs that we already wrote because only because we we want to make sure that the people like it because this is not the way we are um working as a band but we know okay we have we have a path to follow and um try to make it as 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 new and as fresh as possible and i guess yeah i, I don't ask me how but i guess we made it at yeah. least that's something i always hear from the people yeah well it's damned if you do and damned if you don't if you repeat yourself you're a repetitive band if you experiment too much you sell out or you're inconsistent yeah. so you just Absolutely. gotta go with your gut feeling uh, absolutely you have to rely on your own feelings and you have to rely on yourself and if you like what you're doing you, you can be sure that there are people out there who also like what you're doing because you won't be the only one on the planet who, who likes what what you hear so um yeah that's true yep so before we go i'd like to thank you so much for your time today i really enjoyed this discussion is there just anything with the unity you would like to promote can we be expecting to hear uh, some of this material live for pride fairly soon yeah, we will go on tour now, um, mostly here in Europe, not mostly, only in Europe, uh, but uh, our dream would be to, to um, come overseas to the US, to Japan, wherever they want us to play. But uh, nowadays for a new band, and we are still a new band, it's pretty heavy and pretty hard, but um, we're working on it. And we got a lot of cool reactions uh, from the United States. There are a lot of people who like it, but you know, the States are big. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, yeah it's, it's not that easy to, to, to make it overseas, but let's see. You never know. Maybe sometimes the dream comes true. Yeah, never say never, right? Never say never. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael, thank you so much. Everybody, we are here with Michael of the Unity Pride out March 13th. Be sure to pick that up. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.